So you're probably wondering what's going on with the stimulus check part two of what the Democrats, Republicans, President Trump is looking to launch to help you out and help you bail out this whole COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic type of situation. I'll just get to the bottom line. I respect your time and I know you're busy, so I just want to tell you right now, there is no stimulus check coming your way, part two. Zero. So if you're looking for a video that just wants to help you cut to the chase, you found it. But if you want a solution, stick around. So I'm, I'm looking here at the news. I'm looking at here at what Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, the arguments, the agenda. One wants to pass for $1.9 trillion. The other wants to pass for $2.2 trillion. One says, hey, I got some things I want to insert there. The other one says, I got some other things I want to insert there, too. Is nobody came to a decision to help you out. Nobody came to a decision to say, okay, we're going to do a stimulus check part two to help out the American people during this coronavirus. But when you're looking at the, the Senate adjourning Monday for a pre-election break, they can't come into a decision. The senators left the Capitol very likely taking any hopes of an imminent stimulus agreement with them. So the way I look at it as an entrepreneur, and this YouTube channel is about looking at things from the lens of an aspiring millionaire or somebody that wants to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, is that if you want big things in your life, you have to work and put in the hours. Congress just left. Pre-election break. Election is the third. It's next Tuesday. And people are taking off like they got something else better to do than help the American people. And yet this is the Congress that you're voting for. And so when you're looking at the scenario, what's, got, what's going on in the market? What is the result of that? Well, the last couple of days, the Dow Jones dropped. Yesterday, it dropped 650 some points. Today, it dropped 222 some, some points. Over 850 points dropped in the Dow Jones. That's a reflection of people's 401ks. It's a reflection of people's retirement savings. It's a reflection of people's savings in their mutual funds. Whatever investments they may have, that's a direct reflection of the drop in the market because of the lack of confidence that people has placed in the decisions of our politicians. The second part of this is the layoffs that are happening. You know, United Airlines, American Airlines are laying off, I think it's like 32,000 people. You know, Wells Fargo laying off like 50,000 people. You know, looking at companies like Shell, even Shell, an oil company, laying off 9,000 people because of this lack of a decisive decision to help the American people. And yet this is the Congress that you voted for, the president some of you are voting for again or not. You gotta figure out what you're gonna do. This is a result of lack of indecision being able to work together over the last three or four years. So you're looking at this thing. Matt, you said at the beginning of this video, you're gonna have a solution. I do have some solution. Couple solutions here, a few solutions here. Number one, here's who's hiring right now. Uh, this I found on LinkedIn. Andrew Seaman, the editor of LinkedIn News. All these companies are hiring right now. You got fast food industry hiring right now. You got the transportation, online retail hiring right now. UPS is hiring right now. FedEx, McDonald's, Albertsons, Dollar General, Department of Veteran Affairs looking to fill 45,000 positions. Walmart's looking to hire 35,000 positions, including seasonal. Taco Bell is hiring 30,000 people to work at its restaurants. Home Depot, Jackson Hewitt, Walgreens, 7-Eleven, AutoZone. With that being said, you can have a job or jobs. When I was a single dad and I was struggling to make ends meet, financially speaking, I had three jobs. I was a Jiffy Lube hood technician, I was an Olive Garden server, and I was a lifeguard at the YMCA. I know it's a little different now, but there's certain opportunities for you to get a job or jobs, yet it's a temporary job. If you want to be an aspiring millionaire, if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, this, these jobs are going to get you nowhere, financially speaking, but at least it's a band-aid solution to an issue or a problem that requires financial surgery. But it's a job. That's one solution. The other solution, it might be a time for you to actually start that business. I'm reminded of the story of Tabitha Hayden. Why is she such an inspiring story? As she was a teen mom at one point. She had a first baby at 16 years old, couldn't graduate high school due to not having child care, but she didn't give up. Fast forward, she married, divorced, married her husband, current husband right now, Daniel, who's a captain of a cruise ship. They ferry crew workers from shore to ships along the Mississippi River to get to and from work. And she opened up her own insurance agency. She was a tax preparation type person, and obviously right now nobody's doing income taxes. She pivoted, she adapted, she moved into the insurance industry, started her own insurance brokerage. And tap the head, congratulations, now you're on your own insurance brokerage. All smiles because she's helping a lot of people, placing a lot of business. And yes, in, the, in, these, in this era, people are buying insurance. Yes, people are still planning for their retirement, what to do with their 401k or their pensions if they get laid off or furloughed and they got to roll it into individual retirement accounts. So yes, people are in business. They're pivoting and adapting into an industry, which is the financial service industry, which has been the least impacted industry during the whole coronavirus and 
the whole pandemic. And I'm thinking about my own personal story. I'm thinking about when I've been through tough times. I remember when I was a single father, 23 years old, when I had my own three kids, and when I'm starting my business, because here's why I started my own business. I stopped wanting to be dependent on somebody else, whether it's a job, a boss, or in this case, the government, because you know what I've never done in my entire adult life, even as a single parent, even as an entrepreneur starting my own business, I've never depended on Section 8. I've never depended on iLink card uh, welfare programs. I've never depended on church and charity to help me pay for my bills. I fell flat on my face, professionally embarrassed and humiliated when I did the wrong thing. But I learned from it. I got strengthened from it. I learned how to pivot, adjust, adapt, acquire skills. So therefore, when I run across a mistake again, I know how to rise above it. And that's part of the conditions that if you want to be an aspiring millionaire, a first generation cash flow millionaire, it's part of the condition that will make you great. Not good, but it'll make you great. Because a lot of people in America today, as my mentor Patrick Ben David said early in the video, a lot of people in America today are afraid of failing. But yet failure is the DNA necessary to help you rise above and actually appreciate your success and actually want to stoke the fire in your belly and your soul and your spirit to get from zero to hero, to go from chump to champ, to go from broke to ballin'. These are some of the conditions that will make you great, is dealing with failure. Just like Tabitha Hayden dealt with failure, just like many of our associates that dealt with failure. To this day, our insurance firm is still running a $20 million insurance organization. We didn't, we didn't uh, fret, we didn't get run scared, we decided to play offense. And so I didn't even take out the PPP loan. I didn't even take a SBA, I couldn't even tell you how to fill out an SBA loan. We never depended on anybody else. We depend on these hands right here. Not mom and dad's hands, not the, not the church and charities handouts, not the government handouts. We depend on our own hands. And I think if you're watching this video right now and you've had the patience to watch up until this point, you might be saying, you know what, damn it, why am I depending on everybody else? Regardless of Republican or Democrats in office, now, obviously, these are some of the things that help you understand who to vote and make sure you do vote. That's important for you to understand if these hands are what you're depending on, you got to figure out what policy, which president, which Congress, which red or blue is going to help serve your cause here to live your American dream. So I'm going to leave you with four things to think about because every great change has these four elements. Number one, the first change, the first element to great change is you have to have a breaking point, a breaking point. Like it was the straw that broke the camel's back, that this was it. And for some of you guys, the breaking point is being laid off once, twice, three times, being affected by the coronavirus, being infected by the pandemic, being infected by a boss, or you're in an industry where you're establishing a business where it has to be shut down because you can't get customers because you happen to open a business in the wrong industry, but you have to have a breaking point. The second part of this is you have to have some form of deep emotional pain and connection to the situation. Anger, frustration, resentment kicks in. Like, dude, why did I do this? Why do people treat me like this? Why do people treat my family like this? You know, anytime I've came across some great change in my life, I had some deep emotional anger towards the situation. It's like, don't you ever dare disrespect me ever like, ever like that ever again. Don't you ever talk to my family that way ever again. Don't you ever look down upon us ever like that again. Instead of getting in a fist fight about it, guess what my retaliation was? Massive success, which leads me to number three. Number three is commitment. Commitment. I said, you know what? This is never going to happen again. I'm never going to put myself in a situation where I'm dependent upon somebody else, on the handouts of somebody else. You have to have a commitment every day. You know, Damon John wrote a book called The Power of Broke. And part of that power of broke is having a daily commitment every day to get better, to improve your skill set. When you do make money, you have that money, you're more pragmatic about how you spend and reinvest that type of money. You know, all these guys, oh, I just raised this type of money. You know, I raised this money. I raised this money. I think, uh, who is this, uh, Q, uh, 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 Quibi? Is that company called Quibi? Quibi, uh, uh, this company called Quibi lost $2 billion. And everybody was all about this company. But they lost $2 billion, $1.8 to $2 billion in six months. Do you know why? Do you know why? Here's why. It's harder to blow through your money but it's easier to spend the money when somebody else gives it to you because your own money treat it differently. Which leads me to my fourth step here of any great change that needs to happen is you need to plan out your next five moves. You need to plan out your next five moves. 
Do I need to acquire some skill sets? Do I need to fill out some applications? Do I need to uh, reach out to people on DMs and, and uh, reach out to a mentor? Do I need to reach out to people via social media? Do, do I finally start my podcast that I'm supposed to start? Do I really start my, my show on YouTube that I'm supposed to start? Am I supposed to start my online business? Am I supposed to start my insurance career? Am I supposed to start my real estate career? This is your next five moves. Because the current situation where you're at right now and you're not financially happy, obviously, is not working. Now, you gotta make a change. Instead of getting angry about it, getting upset about it, can you get, not bitter about it, but can you get better through it? And as I wrap up, you know, I'm thinking about all the mistakes I've made in my entire life. You know, the, anytime uh, uh, certain things have not gone my way, I said, you know what? Okay, make, mis make mistake, you make mistake, you, you make a mistake towards me, or like the Congress and the Senate and the Democrats, they made a mistake towards you by not helping you with the stimulus plan. Okay, you get a pass. Anybody with me to make a mistake one time, you get a pass. Number two, the second time that mistake happens, okay, that's a coincidence. Why does this keep happening? Second time this happened now. But the mistake happens the third time. Guess what? The mistake happens the third time. Now it's on me because now they're doing it on purpose. And if you feel that the government, if you feel like your current situation right now, it's happening to you over and over and over and over, now it's on you to make that change because now you're responsible for it. And the bottom line is this, I've always felt better about my life when I decided to take responsibility and ownership over the decision of my life, even if I was failing or I was wrong. The moment I took ownership of it, the moment I took responsibility, the moment I took accountability for my decisions, right and or wrong, I felt better about my life because I can look at myself in the mirror and say, you know what, I screwed up, I screwed up, let me get better. Let me not get bitter, but let me get better. And as I wrap up, folks, I would love for you to consider watching this video on three signs that you're ready for a career change. And if you're watching this video right now and you got some thoughts, you got some comments, please drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you think. As you see from our comment section here, we engage, we respond, we want to get better with our videos. We don't get better with your comments. Whether you agree with me or not, I'd love to know what you're thinking. If you do agree with me, I'd love to know what you're thinking. I'd love to know what you guys are doing for uh, November 3rd. So I'm coming up with a video here uh, next couple days on how to vote like a millionaire. How to vote like an aspiring millionaire. How to vote like you want to be financially free and that you want to be financially independent. I'm coming with a video here later on this week on how to do just that before you walk into the voting booths on November 3rd. So with that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you'll mash that like button. You follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications. to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue live smart, continue love smart, and be money smart today. Let's <laughs> go.